Hi, welcome to Inkscape for Teachers. I'm Jeff Phillips. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you a fascinating feature of Inkscape that allows you to construct uh, fractal geometry, such as the Kosh snowflake here. I'm a big fan, if you haven't guessed already, of uh, Inkscape, and it really is an Aladdin's cave with uh, many hidden jewels. If you if you're prepared to look, I only just discovered this one the other day. I'll just show you some of the designs that. Uh, the feature I'm going to show you in Inkscape is capable of doing. I've got them in separate files. There's one and another, another and another. Anyway, before we uh, go too far, let's uh, show you how I did these. I'll go to File New just to create a new Inkscape file. I'll hit 1 to zoom to 1 to 1 mouse wheel to scroll, hold mouse wheel down to pan and these uh, feet, this feature is hidden under extensions so if I go to extensions render and a very innocuous looking subcategory L system which is short for Lindenmayer system now you can see why I didn't experiment too much with this before I had no idea what the heck any of this meant but apparently Linden Mayer systems, or L systems for short, are to do with uh, fractal geometry and recursive geometry. Some of you might remember the Turtle or Logo programming languages that uh, trace different uh, steps and allows you to repeat those and produce some fascinating patterns. You can see the instructions in here. Uh, there's a particular code to all this. I, can, I don't uh, understand it all fully but uh, I can repeat it to produce the, the geometry that I wish by copying from uh, other sources. The letters stand for, for steps. Uh, I think the square brackets stand for return to a certain point. Uh, the equals stands for replace. Pluses, I think, a right turn. Minus is a left turn and so on. And that all combines to produce a different path which you can then recurse or repeat over an existing path. That's why we say M equals or M is replaced by and the rest of the, the coding. Anyway, don't worry too much about that. In fact, I'm going to wipe it out. If I wipe out the axiom, which is the key rule, key um, starting point, and I'll just delete to get rid of all that text. I'll be changing some of these values as well. Now, for the cost snowflake, the fractal is as follows. F plus plus F plus plus F the rule is F is replaced by F minus F plus plus F minus F now I've got these instructions listed uh, in my Inkscape files for which there are links in the description of this video you can also check these out online or search for them in Google. Now for the Kosh snowflake I think it was 60 degrees. I'm not sure if it's 60 or 120 but I'll try the 60 in both angles. Leave the randomize uh, sections at zero. The step length I find 15 is pretty good. The order is the number of levels of recursion. If I just leave it at one I can do a live preview by ticking this box. Just while that's, I'm waiting for that, just be careful, don't do too many. I've never gone past about four or five in here. I think you can chew up your processing power and freeze your computer. If I drag that across, then you can see level one. If I increase that to level two, there we go. Level three, and so forth. I'll stop it there for the purposes of this video. Click apply and close. Click and drag that back into position. Now that's a fairly powerful way of drawing a cross snowflake rather than having to follow the traditional method of drawing a side, dividing in three, putting a spike in the middle, then repeating that on each, each individual section for so many steps. Okay. As I said, there are different instructions for different shapes. I'll just show you one of my other files, the Sierpinski Triangle. I've pasted a screen dump of the rules to put in here. Now if you look up online and there are a couple of rules to put in here or processes, a semicolon separates them. You haven't got separate boxes for different rules, just use a semicolon to separate them. 
and type in the information that I've got there or that you've got from somewhere else, you'll be able to produce some fascinating shapes. Once again, that completes this tutorial and thank you very much for watching.